last modified on February 25, 2015, at 139. 50 Shades of Grey, Film 50 Shades of Grey Theatrical Release Poster Directed by Sam Taylor Johnson Produced by Michael DeLuca Dana Brunetti E.L. James Screenplay by Kelly Marcel Based on 50 Shades of Grey By E.L. James Starring Dakota Johnson Jamie Dornan Jennifer L. Aloise Mumford Victor Rasuk Luke Grimes Rita Ora Max Martini Callum Keith Rennie Andrew Airlie Dylan Neal Marcia Gay Harden Music by Danny Elfman Cinematography Seamus McGarvey Edited by N.V. Coates Lisa Gunning Deborah Neal Fisher Production Companies Focus Features Michael DeLuca Productions Trigger Street Productions Distributed by Universal Pictures Release Dates February 11, 2015, Berlin February 13, 2015, United States Running Time 125 minutes country united states language english budget 40 million dollars box office 411.5 million dollars 50 shades of gray is a 2015 american erotic romantic drama film directed by sam taylor johnson with a screenplay by kelly marcel Based on British author E. L. James' best-selling novel of the same name, the film stars Dakota Johnson as Anastasia Steele, a college graduate who begins a sadomasochistic relationship with young business magnate Christian Grey, Jamie Dornan. The film premiered at the 65th Berlin International Film Festival on February 11, 2015, and had a wide theatrical release on February 13, 2015, by Universal Pictures. Although the film received mixed reviews from critics, it was an immediate box office success, earning more than $411 million. A sequel is planned for a 2016 release. History The film was written following the huge success of the book selling over 16 million copies and being translated into 30 countries. Plot Anastasia Anna Steele is an undergraduate attending college near Vancouver, Washington State, and shares an apartment with her roommate Kate Cavanaugh. Anna agrees to interview a young corporate executive, Christian Gray, at his company headquarters in Seattle for the college newspaper, after Kate becomes ill. When Anna meets him for the interview, Christian appears to show an interest in her and, soon after the interview ends, he arrives by accident at the hardware store where Anna is working part-time. After some ensuing small talk, Christian agrees to participate in a photo shoot which Anna requests to accompany her college newspaper interview. The photo shoot later takes place and Christian continues to show an interest in Anna. He invites her to stop at a coffee shop together. After talking some more to her, Christian is sufficiently impressed by Anna that he arranges to have first editions of Tess of the D'Urberville sent to her home after learning of her interest in literature during their conversation. On that same day, Anna goes out on the town drinking with her friends, and calls Christian spontaneously after having too much to drink. Christian senses she is drunk, asks her where she is, and decides to go personally and ask her to leave the bar. Before passing out, Anna sees Kate flirting with Christian's brother, Elliot. Anna wakes up in Christian's hotel room and is relieved to find she did not have sex with Christian. Not overly worried about this awkward start, Anna and Christian begin dating soon thereafter and Christian asks Anna to sign a non-disclosure agreement regarding their relationship. Christian expresses an interest in exploring a subculture relationship with Anna involving controlled bondage. Anna appears to agree though she admits to be sexually naive and that she is still sexually unenlightened and uninitiated. 
Anna and Christian soon engage in a sexual relationship along with some of the sexual experimentation which Christian had earlier indicated he wanted with her. During the next few days, Christian begins to shower Anna with unexpected gifts and favors, such as a new car and laptop. One night, Anna accompanies Christian to a dinner at his parents' house, meeting Christian's father and sister. During dinner, Anna reveals she will be leaving the next day to visit her mother in Georgia. This infuriates Christian as Anna reveals she wants a relationship that is more romantic than sexual. Anna leaves and is shocked when Christian surprises her while she is drinking with her mother. The next morning, Christian takes Anna on a date in his glider. Christian leaves soon after as there is an emergency in Seattle. Not long after returning home, Anna still sees Christian. Christian continues to express an interest in further sexual experimentation to which Anna initially consents and participates in willingly. Christian, however, continues to wish to keep Anna at a distance emotionally, which is upsetting to Anna. Anna then asks Christian to show her what he really wants. They have an ensuing sexual encounter where Christian shows an excessive desire to use his own variety of rough sex. Anna senses this as disturbing and not within the bounds of her more romantic expectations of Christian. Anna becomes resolved that Christian is wrong for her and that she believes that Christian's experimentation borders on being deviant and excessive. At her insistence, the two part company in the hallway outside his apartment. Cast Dakota Johnson on the film set in January 2014. Dakota Johnson as Anastasia Anna Steele. Jamie Dornan as Christian Gray. Aloise Mumford as Catherine Kate Cavanaugh, Anastasia's best friend and roommate. Jennifer L. as Carla Wilkes, Anastasia's mother. Marcia Gay Harden as Grace Trevelyan Gray, Christian's adoptive mother. Victor Rasuk as Jose Rodriguez, one of Anastasia's close friends. Luke Grimes as Elliot Gray, Christian's adopted brother. Rita Ora as Mia Gray, Christian's adopted sister. Max Martini as Jason Taylor, Christian's bodyguard and head of his security. Callum Keith Rennie as Raymond Ray Steele. Andrew Airly as Carrick Gray, Christian's adoptive father. Dylan Neal as Bob Adams, Anastasia's stepfather. Anthony Conkney as Paul Clayton, the brother of the owner of Clayton's hardware store. Emily Fonda as Martina. Rachel Scarsten as Andrea, Christian's assistant. Production By early 2013, several Hollywood studios were keen to obtain film rights to the New York Times best-selling Fifty Shades trilogy of novels. Warner Brothers, Sony, Paramount, Universal, and Mark Wahlberg's production company put in bids for the film rights. Universal Pictures and Focus Features secured the rights to the trilogy in March 2012. Author James sought to retain some control during the movie's creative process. James chose the social network producers Michael DeLuca and Dana Brunetti to produce the film. Although American Psycho writer Brett Easton Ellis publicly expressed his desire to write the screenplay for the film, Kelly Marcel, screenwriter of Saving Mr. Banks, was hired for the job. Patrick Marber was brought in by Taylor Wood to polish the screenplay, specifically to do some character work. Universal hired Mark Baum back for script doctoring. Mark Bridges served as the costume designer. Entertainment Weekly estimated the film's budget as $40 million or so. Director By May 9, 2013, the studio was considering Joe Wright to direct, but this proved unworkable due to Wright's schedule. Other directors who had been under consideration included Patty Jenkins, Bill Condon, Bennett Miller, and Steven Soderbergh. In June 2013, E.L. James announced Sam Taylor Johnson would direct the film adaptation. Nine One Half Weeks, Last Tango in Paris and Blue is the Warmest Color were all cited as inspirations for the film by Taylor Johnson. Casting Brett Easton Ellis stated that Robert Pattinson had been James' first choice for the role of Christian Grey, but James felt that casting Pattinson and Kristen Stewart in the film would be weird. Ian Summerhalder and Chase Crawford both expressed interest in the role of Christian. Summerhalder later admitted if he had been considered, 
the filming process would ultimately have conflicted with his shooting schedule for the CW series The Vampire Diaries. On September 2, 2013, James revealed that Charlie Hunnam and Dakota Johnson had been cast as Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele, respectively. The short list of other actresses considered for the role of Anastasia included Alicia Vikander, Imogen Poots, Elizabeth Olsen, Shailene Woodley, and Felicity Jones. Keely Hazel auditioned for an unspecified role. Lucy Hale also auditioned for the film. Taylor Johnson would give every actress who auditioned for Anastasia's role to read four pages of a monologue from Ingmar Bergman's persona. The studio originally wanted Ryan Gosling for Christian, but he was not interested in the role. Garrett Hedlund was also considered, but he could not connect with the character. Stephen Amell said he would not have wanted to play the role of Grey because I actually didn't find him to be that interesting, nothing about Christian Grey really spoke to me. Hunnam initially turned down the role of Christian but later reconsidered it following a meeting with studio heads. Hunnam said of the audition process, I felt really intrigued and excited about it so I went and read the first book to get a clearer idea of who this character was, and I felt even more excited at the prospect of bringing him to life. We Taylor Johnson and I kind of both suggested I do a reading with Dakota, who was her favorite, and as soon as we got in the room and I started reading with Dakota I knew that I definitely wanted to do it. There's just like a tangible chemistry between us. It felt exciting and fun and weird and compelling. In response to the negative fan reaction the casting drew, producer Dana Brunetti said, there is a lot that goes into casting that isn't just looks. Talent, availability, their desire to do it, chemistry with other actor, et so if your favorite wasn't cast, then it is most likely due to something on that list. Keep that in mind while hating and keep perspective. During October 2013, actress Jennifer L. was in talks for the role of Anastasia's mother Carla. On October 12, 2013, Universal Pictures announced that Hunnam had exited the film due to conflicts with the schedule of his FX series Sons of Anarchy. Alexander Skarsgård, Jamie Dornan, Theo James, Francois Arnaud, Scott Eastwood, Luke Bracey, and Billy Magnuson were at the top of the list to replace Hunnam as Christian Grey. Finally, on October 23, 2013, Dornan was cast as Christian Grey. On October 31, 2013, Victor Rasuk was cast as Jose Rodriguez, Jr. On November 22, 2013, Aloise Mumford was cast as Kate Cavanaugh. On December 2, 2013, singer Rita Ora was cast as Christian's younger sister Mia. Ora originally wanted to work on the soundtrack. On December 3, 2013, Marcia Gay Harden was cast as Christian's mother, Grace. Filming In September, filming was scheduled to start on November 5, 2013 in Vancouver, British Columbia. The following month, Producer Michael DeLuca announced filming would begin on November 13, 2013. Principal photography was again delayed and eventually started on December 1, 2013. Scenes were filmed in the Gastown district of Vancouver. Bentel 5 was used as the Gray Enterprises building. The University of British Columbia serves as Washington State University Vancouver, from which Anna graduates. The Fairmont Hotel Vancouver was used as the Heathman Hotel. The film was also shot at the North Shore Studios. The production officially ended on February 21, 2014. Reshoots involving scenes between Dornan and Johnson took place in Vancouver during the week of October 13, 2014. Soundtrack Main article, Fifty Shades of Grey, Soundtrack James said that the film's soundtrack would be released on February 10, 2015. The first single, Earned It, by The Weeknd, was released on December 24, 2014. On January 7, 2015, the second single, Love Me Like You Do by Ellie Golding was released, later reaching the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, and becoming a hit for the soundtrack. 
a third single, Salted Wound by Australian singer SIA, was released on January 27, 2015. Release Jamie Dornan at the world premiere of Fifty Shades of Grey, Berlinal 2015. In February 2013, Universal chairman Adam Fogelson said the film could be ready to release, as early as next summer. The studio initially announced an August 1, 2014 release. However, in November 2013, it was pushed back to February 13, 2015, in time for Valentine's Day. Fifty Shades of Grey was first screened at the 65th Berlin International Film Festival on February 11, 2015. The film was released in 75 IMAX screens across the US on February 13, 2015. Marketing On January 25, 2014, more than a year prior to release, Universal displayed posters with the phrase, Mr. Gray will see you now in five locations across the United States. On February 14, 2014, the first photograph of Johnson as Anastasia was released. On June 18, 2014, the film's official Twitter account released the first still of Dornan as Christian in honor of Christian's birthday. On July 9, 2014, the book's author, E.L. James, said on Twitter that the film's trailer would be released on July 24, 2014. Beyoncé debuted a teaser for the trailer on her Instagram account five days before the trailer's release. On July 24, Dornan and Johnson were on the Today Show to present part of the trailer appropriate for morning television, the full trailer, which contained more racy scenes, was released later the same day on the internet, 200 days before its initial theatrical release. The trailer featured a new version of Crazy in Love by Beyoncé which was scored and arranged by her frequent collaborator Boots. The trailer was viewed 36.4 million times in the week after its July 24 release. This made it the most viewed trailer on YouTube in 2014, until it was surpassed in October by the trailer for Avengers, Age of Ultron. However, in mid-December the trailer reached 93 million views and was again the most viewed of 2014. The trailer accumulated over 100 million views in its first week of release through different channels and websites, becoming the biggest trailer ever released in history. By February 2015, the trailer had been viewed more than 193 million times on YouTube alone. And by late February, Fifty Shades of Grey related material garnered over 329 million views including 113 million views for its official trailer. A second trailer was released on November 13, 2014. A third trailer aired during Super Bowl XLIX on February 1, 2015. The film was promoted through an ad campaign that asked people whether they were curious. Nick Carpo, Universal's president of domestic distribution said, Our campaign gave people permission to see the film. Valentine's is a big deal for couples and a great relationship event, and the date with the long President's Day weekend created a perfect storm for us. This date positioned us to take full advantage of the romance angle, which is how we sold the film in our marketing campaign, he said. Rating and Censorship there was initial speculation that the film could receive NC-17 rating in the United States. Studios typically steer away from the adults-only rating due to the impact the classification has on a film's commercial viability, with some theater chains refusing to exhibit NC-17 rated films. While screenwriter Marcel said she expected the film to be NC-17 rated, producer DeLuca anticipated the less restrictive R rating. On January 5th, 2015, the MPAA did give the film an R rating, basing its decision on strong sexual content including dialogue, some unusual behavior and graphic nudity, and language. On January 30, in Australia, the film was rated MA 15 plus by the ACB for strong sex scenes, sexual themes, and nudity. On February 2, 2015, the British BBFC classified the film an 18 certificate, mentioning strong sex. 
In Canada, Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and British Columbia, the film was rated at 18A by the OFRB, MFCB, AFR, and PCO respectively due to its occasional upsetting or disturbing scenes, and partial or full nudity in a brief sexual situation. In Quebec, the Régie du Cinéma rated the movie under the 16-plus category for its eroticism. In France, the film earned a 12 rating. In Lebanon, the film earned an NC-21 rating. Anti-pornography watchdog group Morality in Media argued that the film's R rating severely undermines the violent themes in the film and does not adequately inform parents and patrons of the film's content, and that the MPAA was encouraging sexual violence by letting the film by without an NC-17 rating. The film was scheduled for a February 12, 2015, release in Malaysia, but it was denied a certificate by the Malaysian Film Censorship Board, LPF, for its unnatural and sadistic content. The LPF chairman, Abdul Halim Abdul Hamid, said Fifty Shades was more pornography than a movie. The film was also banned in Indonesia, Kenya, Russia's North Caucasus, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, Papua New Guinea, and Cambodia. The film was released in Nigeria for a week, before being removed from cinemas by the National Film and Video Censors Board, NFVCB. Studios will not pursue a theatrical release in China. The film's sex scenes were censored after protests from various religious groups in the Philippines, and as a result it is in limited release in that country. A similarly cut version was released in Zimbabwe. Opposition Campaign On January 28, 2015, a campaign in the United States by the National Center on Sexual Exploitation started two petitions to boycott the film's release. Their website makes more than 50 allegations that the film has a negative impact on the community. It said, Hollywood is advertising the Fifty Shades story as an erotic love affair, but it is really about sexual abuse and violence against women. The porn industry has poised men and women to receive the message that sexual violence is enjoyable. Fifty Shades models this porn message and Hollywood cashes the check. By February 7, one of the petitions had garnered more than 53,000 signatures. On February 2, in Michigan, a man petitioned to halt the film's release at a local celebration. Cinema Despite the man's efforts, the president of the cinemas declined to cancel the release of the film. He said, We've been in business for 70 years and people oftentimes object to content, and it's not our job to censor the content of a widespread movie. It's not in our best interest. It's not in the community's best interest. The film sold 3,000 tickets before the release and was expected to sell a total of 10,000 tickets. Piracy On February 14, 2015, during the film's opening premiere, a low-quality illegal leak was downloaded, via piracy sites, more than 298,037 times over a three-days period. The top territories were the U.S., 44,896 downloaders, followed by the U.K., 33,839 downloaders, India, 19,298 downloaders, and the Philippines, 16,952 downloaders. Reception Box Office As of February 21, 2015 update, Fifty Shades of Grey has grossed an estimated $130.1 million in the North America and $280.5 million in other territories for a worldwide total of $410.6 million. The film had a worldwide opening of $237.7 million. By grossing over $300 million worldwide, it became the fourth film directed by a female to earn more than $400 million, the others being Kung Fu Panda 2, Mamma Mia! and Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Squeakquel. Tickets for the film went on sale from January 11, 2015, in the United States. According to ticket-selling site Fandango, Fifty Shades of Grey is the fastest-selling R-rated title in the site's 15-year history, surpassing Sex and the City 2.
It also had the biggest first week of ticket sales on Fandango for a non-sequel film, surpassing 2012's The Hunger Games. It is fourth overall on Fandango's list of top advanced ticket sales behind The Twilight Saga, New Moon, Harry Potter and The Deathly Hallows Part 2 and The Hunger Games. The demand prompted U.S. theater owners to add new showtimes. Weeks before the film's release, several box office analysts suggested as much as a $60 million domestic four-day opening while Box Office Mojo reported that a $100 million opening could be possible. Outside the United States, the film pre-sold 4.5 million tickets in 39 markets. In the UK, the film sold 1.3 million pounds, $1.9 million, worth of tickets a week before its release. North America Fifty Shades of Grey opened in the North America simultaneously with Kingsman, The Secret Service on Thursday, February 12, 2015, across 2,830 theaters and was widened to 3,646 theaters the next day making it the widest R-rated opening, and the third widest R-rated release of all time. It earned $8.6 million from Thursday night shows which is the highest late night show for a film released in February, Universal's highest late night show, previously held by Fast and Furious 6 with $6.5 million, and the second highest R-rated preview gross behind The Hangover Part 2, $10.4 million. The film topped the box office on its opening day grossing $30.2 million, including Thursday previews, from 3,464 theaters setting a record for highest February opening day, previously held by The Passion of the Christ, and fourth highest overall among R-rated films. During its traditional three-day opening the film opened at number one at the box office earning $85 million, setting records for both biggest Valentine's Day weekend gross, a record previously held by Valentine's Day, and biggest President's Day weekend gross. Other records set by the film includes the biggest opening weekend for a film directed by a woman, a record previously held by Catherine Hardwick's Twilight, the biggest opening weekend for a film released in February, a record previously held by The Passion of the Christ, the third highest opening weekend for Universal and the fourth biggest R-rated opening of all time. Female comprised 82% of the total audiences during its opening day, and 68% on Valentine's Day. Revenue from the second weekend dropped by 73% to $23.1 million, which is the second biggest drop for a 3,000 plus screen release and the biggest for a 3,500 plus screen release. It is just the eighth film to open on more than 3,000 screens to drop by 70% or more. Box office critics have pointed out that such massive drops witnessed in female driven films are common, such as in the case of The Twilight Saga. New Moon, 2009, Valentine's Day, 2010, and The Fault in Our Stars, 2014. Outside North America Outside the US and Canada, box office analysts were predicting as much as $158 million opening. It opened Wednesday, February 11, 2015, in four countries, earning $3.7 million. It opened in 34 more countries on February 12, earning $28.6 million in three days. The film set opening day records for Universal Pictures in 25 markets and opening day records for an R-rated film in 34 territories. Through Sunday, February 15, it earned an opening weekend total of $156 million from 58 countries where it opened at number 1 in 54 of the 58 markets countries which is the biggest international opening of 2015, Universal's second biggest international opening weekend ever, behind 2013's Fast and Furious 6 which grossed $160.3 million, and biggest opening weekend ever for an R-rated film a record previously held by The Matrix Revolutions with $117 million. The three markets where the film did not open at number one were Singapore, Hong Kong and Thailand where the top spot was claimed by Kingsman, the secret service which also opened at the same weekend. On Saturday, February 14, 
the film earned $55.1 million which is Universal's highest grossing single day ever at the international box office, a record also previously held by Fast and Furious 6 with $46.2 million. The film set an all-time opening record in 13 markets, Universal's biggest opening weekend ever in 30 markets and biggest opening for any R-rated film in 31 markets. The biggest opener outside of the United States was witnessed in the UK where it earned £13.55 million, $20.8 million, in its opening weekend, which is the biggest debut ever for an 18-rated film, the biggest for a non-sequel film and the ninth biggest of all time. It's the biggest opening for a film since The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 2 opened with £15.81 million in 2012. In just 10 days of release it became the highest grossing 18-rated film of all time. Other high openings include Germany, $14.1 million, France, $12.3 million, Russia, $11 million, Italy, $10.1 million, Spain, $8.7 million, Brazil, $8.3 million, Mexico, $8.1 million, Australia, $8 million, Poland, $4.7 million, and Argentina, $3.5 million. Critical Reception The film received mixed reviews from critics. The review aggregator website Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating, gave the film a score of 46 out of 100, based on 46 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, another review aggregator, the film has a score of 24%, based on 201 reviews, with a rating average of 4.2-10. The site's consensus reads, while creatively better endowed than its print counterpart, Fifty Shades of Grey is a less than satisfying experience on the screen. In cinema score polls conducted during the opening weekend, cinema audiences gave the film an average grade of C and on an A and to F scale. Claudia Pook of USA Today wrote that the dialogue is laughable, the pacing is sluggish and the performances are one note. Moira McDonald of the Seattle Times wrote that Fifty Shades of Grey the movie, for the record, is not quite as bad as Fifty Shades of Grey the book. But that's not saying much. The Guardian lead film critic Peter Bradshaw gave the film one star out of five, calling it the most purely tasteful and soft-core depiction of sadomasochism in cinema history with strictly daytime soap performances. A.O. Scott of New York Times called the movie terrible, but wrote that it might nonetheless be a movie that feels good to see, whether you squirm or giggle or roll your eyes or just sit still and take your punishment. In a positive review for the Daily Telegraph, Robbie Collin called the film sexy, funny, and self-aware in every way the original book isn't. Elizabeth Weitzman of New York Daily News praised the directing, screenplay, and Johnson's performance, but called Dornan's performance, the lead's chemistry, and the supporting cast underused. She praised the film for honoring the essence of its source and the director's way of balancing atmosphere with action. In The Guardian, Jordan Hoffman awarded the film 3 out of 5 stars, writing this big screen adaptation still manages to be about people, and even a little bit sweet, and that the sex scenes are there to advance the plot, and only the most buttoned up prude will be scandalized. Lisa Swartzbaum of Entertainment Weekly gave the film a B, writing, this perfectly normal way of consuming erotica suggests that the movie Fifty Shades of Grey will work better as home entertainment, when each viewer can race past the blah blah about how well Christian plays the piano and pause on the fleeting image of the man minus his pants. Pornographic Adaptation Lawsuit In June 2012, pornographic film company Smash Pictures announced its intent to film a pornographic version of the Fifty Shades trilogy entitled Fifty Shades of Grey, a triple X adaptation. A release date of January 10, 2013 was announced. In November 2012, Universal, which had secured the Fifty Shades film rights, filed a lawsuit against Smash Pictures, stating that the film violated its copyright in that it was not filmed as a parody adaptation but copies without reservation from the unique expressive elements of the Fifty Shades trilogy, progressing through the events of Fifty Shades of Grey and into the second book, 
50 shades darker. The lawsuit asked for an injunction, for the profits from all sales of the film, as well as damages, saying that a quickly and cheaply produced pornographic work that is likely to cause plaintiffs irreparable harm by poisoning public perception of the Fifty Shades trilogy and the forthcoming Universal films. Smash Pictures responded to the lawsuit by issuing a counterclaim and requesting a continuance, stating that much or all of the Fifty Shades material was part of the public domain because it was originally published in various venues as a fan fiction based on the Twilight series. A lawyer for Smash Pictures further commented that the federal copyright registrations for the books were invalid and unenforceable and that the film did not violate copyright or trademark laws. The lawsuit was eventually settled out of court for an undisclosed sum and Smash Pictures agreed to stop any further production or promotion of the film. Sequels At a fan screening in New York City on February 6, 2015, Taylor Johnson announced that the book sequels Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed will also be adapted, with the first to be released in 2016. Principal photography for the first sequel will commence in June 2015 and will return to Vancouver.